want to try to solve 5 sine x plus 2 equals 0. Directions are the same as they've been. We're going to find all solutions in this interval from 0 to 2 pi, including 0, not 2 pi. And then we're going to find all solutions. Okay. So first thing I want to do is just isolate that trig function. So I'll subtract over that 2. So 5 sine x equals negative 2. And then we can divide both sides by 5. And so sine x is equal to negative 2 fifths. Now, as long as this is a number between negative 1 and 1, there are solutions. And negative 2 fifths is definitely in the range of sine. Okay. But it's not one that has what I call a nice reference angle. So the reference angle isn't going to be pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 4. If you've memorized the unit circle, you probably have not memorized any points where the capital Y value is negative 2 fifths. Okay. So here, we're going to have to describe that reference angle using inverse trig. Okay. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to say, OK, that's a negative number. So I know that sine is negative in two quadrants. So it's negative in quadrant three, so I'll have an angle that looks like this. And it's negative in quadrant four, so I'll have an angle that looks like that. And neither one of them is arc sine of negative 2 fifths. Because while arc sine does give me some angles in quadrant 4, we don't get to quadrant 4 by rotating in the positive direction if we're working with arc sine. If arc sine is an angle in quadrant 4, it would be a negative acute angle. So arc sine isn't going to give me any solutions in this interval that I want. However, my reference angle, both of these are going to have the same reference angle here. What I know about that is that sine of alpha is the absolute value of negative 2 fifths, which is 2 fifths. I can use arc sine to describe the reference angle. And that's generally what I'm going to do even if I'm working with a function like cosine. Now arc cosine gives me angles in quadrants 1 and 2. So if I had arc cosine of a negative value, that would give me one of the values from 0 to 2 pi. But the other solution I'd want to describe in terms of the reference angle. So I kind of want to get the reference angle anyway. And what's nice about the reference angle is it's always an acute angle. And acute angles are in the range of every single trig function. So if I'm working with the reference angle, I don't have to double check, is this going to be in the range of my inverse trig function? Acute angles are in the range of every single one. Okay. So I'm just going to say here, alpha is arc sine of 2 fifths. Excellent. So here I can say x was pi plus alpha. So that's going to be pi plus arc sine of 2 fifths. Okay. And here, I'm going to say x was 2 pi minus alpha. So that's 2 pi minus arc sine of 2 fifths. So those are my two solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Let me just write down the answers over here. Now, sometimes as you're doing the homework, just make sure you're reading the directions. If the book asks for an exact answer, you're giving it in terms of arc sine or inverse sine, which is equivalent. If it asks for a decimal approximation, then you're using your calculator to get that. Sometimes people feel like a calculator is more precise because it gives you decimal digits. But the decimal digits are almost always going to go on forever and ever and ever. Giving just enough that fit on the calculator screen, that's rounding. That's not more precise. These are my exact answers. Pi plus arc sine of 2 fifths and 2 pi minus arc sine of 2 fifths. Excellent. For part B, to find all solutions, I'm just going to say it's pi plus arc sine of 2 fifths plus 2 pi n. In a moment, I'm going to specify that n is an integer. And then here, I can just say negative arc sine of 2 fifths plus 2 pi n. In both cases, n is an integer. Now you might ask, what happened to that 2 pi? Well, I observed that that was a multiple of 2 pi. Okay? So it's not necessary for me to write it. In fact, it becomes a little bit redundant 
to write it because that would be saying like I'm going to have 2 pi minus arc sine of 2 fifths plus some more 2 pi's. All I'm doing here is if I were to add a multiple of 2 pi here, I get the same things I'd get here just for different values of n. Here I get this answer by letting n be 1. If I let n be 0, I'm getting negative arc sine of 2 fifths, which is what I'd get if I added a negative 2 pi to this. So I'm getting the same answers, this is just a little bit more concise. If I wanted to, I could combine these because they're both just multiples of pi. So I could consolidate terms and say that this is 2n plus 1 times pi plus arc sine of 2 fifths. I'm fine with you leaving it as a sum of these three terms or as you consolidating to write it as a sum of two terms, I would accept either of those.